Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming. Uh, today, we'll be talking about a penetration testing framework for software-defined de networks, which is called Delta. And before we begin, um, let me introduce ourselves briefly. My name is Sung Su, and this is Jinu, and we have Sung Won, who is sitting in the front row. And uh, we, we are the graduate students at KAIST and currently working with Professor Sung Won Shin. And um, he, he is leading a uh, network against system security laboratory at KAIST. Um, we have been working on a various SDN security projects, and among them, today we would like to um, introduce Project Delta. So this is a summary of the contents. So first, uh, we would like to briefly talk about the motivation of Delta, and, um, and for better understanding, we um, described uh, some backgrounds on SDN and open flows and security of SDN, and after that, we, disc uh, we introduce our Delta framework in detail and show some attack demonstrations. And lastly, we have the final remarks. So why we need Delta? Um, although the attention to SDN has been growing as a next, next gen networking, uh, the security of SDN, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the SDN networks are still prone to uh, uh, security threat. So we need to verify the security of SDN by running the security test. But the problem here is that manually testing each attack is very time consuming and unknown job. So uh, like the Nessus or Metasploit that targets the traditional networks, we need an SDN specific pen testing framework. So Delta uh, has been developed. So by using Delta, we can automatically reproduce the known other cases, and also we can find new vulnerabilities by randomizing SDN control flows, such as OpenFlow. So to easily understand Delta, we need some backgrounds on SDN and OpenFlow. So let's let's have a look at what they are. So in the traditional networks, there there are two problems when many companies are scaling up their networks. The first one is that network and security devices are too expensive because it consists of a uh, vendor specific software on top of a specialized hardware. And also they are mostly a uh, closed platform so it is very difficult to add new functionality or protocols to the devices. And also there is a maintenance cost as well. So if there are more devices on the networks, the more complicated to maintain them. So uh, to deal with the increase in network management, um, you have to spend more money to keep it up and running. So in short, um, scaling up network is all about money, so they really want to save on money as, possi uh, as possible. So to overcome those problems that I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, software-defined networking is proposed, and uh, the key idea of SDN is separation and centralization of control plane. So as you can see here, the network devices that we are familiar with today can be broken down into two different planes. The first one is the control plane, and this is a uh, software components that makes routing decisions and conducts other network functions. And another is a data plane, and this is a simple packet, packet forwarding device, so it just forward or drop the packets from the control plane decisions. But in SDN, they, uh, they separate the control planes from the devices and then centralize it into the SDN controller. So the SDN controller is connected to all the data planes, uh, and communicate with them using SDN protocol uh, known as OpenFlow. Um, basically, SDN controllers provide the useful network functions such as switch discovery, host discovery, and routing computation, and so on. So whenever you connect those devices to the SDN controller, the controller automatically constructs a global network view, so it is far easier to manage the network devices in SDN. And also, um, it is possible to flexibly customize the network functions using the open APIs that most of the app SNN applications available today expose. So you can easily develop various SNN applications such as DHCP, firewall, and DDoS sector, and so on. Um, so this can be new opportunities because unlike the traditional network, uh, now you have the global network view and um, innovative network functions in these SNN applications. So you can just deploy it into your SDN so that uh, the SDN applications automatically manage the networks. So for that reason, uh, SDN is known as a programmable network today. And um, as I mentioned before, uh, SDN controller and the switches communicate with each other using OpenFlow protocol, and it is currently maintained by an Open Networking Foundation, which is an organization dedicated to the standard digestion of SDN. So, so um, OpenFlow is a de facto standard protocol in SDN. And as you can see in this version timeline, 
Uh, the first release in, was in uh, 2009, and the latest version is 1.5, which was released in 2015. And although the last, latest version is 1.5, uh, in practice, most of the OpenFlow enabled switch devices support two prevalent OpenFlow versions, 1.0 and 1.3. Uh, in OpenFlow 1.0, uh, every OpenFlow message begins with the same header structure, uh, as you shown in the top right. And following the header, the body section starts in, in accordance with each, each OpenFlow message type, such as packet in or flow mode. Uh, so in, uh, in OpenFlow 1.0, uh, there are 22 message types in total. And in the case of the OpenFlow switch, uh, it consists of a flow table and handles the incoming packets in three steps. So, f so first, when a packet arrives at the switch, uh, the switch looks up the flow rules in the table by, by matching, uh, by, uh, by looking up header fields such as import and Ethernet type and IP addresses and so on. So if the, match, the packet is matched to a specific flow rule, uh, any action, any actions for that flow rule are performed on the packet. For instance, the switch can uh, forward the packet to the other port or modify the header fields. And after those actions are executed, uh, the switch in increase the counters of the flow rule, um, such as packet counts or byte counts. So those counter can be used to analyze the flow statistics from the controller later. So let's have a look at uh, the basic operation uh, of OpenFlow, and here we have a very simple network topology with one switch and two hosts. So when connecting to the Open SDN controller, the switch exchanges the OpenFlow hello messages with the controller first, and after the handshake process is done, uh, in this example, host A tries to send a packet to host B. But since there is no match flow rule in the table, uh, according to the OpenFlow specification, the switch uh, sends a packet message including the incoming packet header to the SDN controller. Then, um, in order to install new flow rule, the, the controller sends flow mode message uh, to the switch so that the packet can be forwarded to its original destination. Uh, so as you can see in this installed flow rule in the table, the match fields have import, Ethernet type, and destination IP address. So since the packet is matched to this flow rule, um, it can be forwarded to host B and the counters of the flow rule increase as well. Um, as I briefly mentioned, in addition to OpenFlow 1.0, uh, OpenFlow 1.3 is widely used as well. So the noticeable differences between them are as follows. And so first of all, there are more seven message types in OpenFlow 1.3, and this is for supporting multiple controllers group table, meter table, and so on. So um, you can find a detailed description about that in OpenFlow 1.3 specification. And so with such a version upgrade, OpenFlow 1.3 uh, enhanced the reliability, scalability, and efficiency of the protocol than OpenFlow 1.0. So um, as I described in the previous slides, there are many advantages of SDN, so many companies are uh, adopting SDN these days. For instance, uh, the telco companies like Deutsche Telekom, AT&T, and Verizon uh, are building 5G networks and wide area networks using SDN, and also the major companies like Google and Facebook are using SDN to build their data centers. And not only the industry, but also the military in the U.S. are considering to adopt SDN into their military networks. Because of the military network characteristics, it seems that they, they prefer the centralized network management with the global network view in SDN. So um, now the now question is, uh, what about the security of SDN? Um, although SDN offers the significant uh, significant advantages over the traditional networking, uh, the security of SDN has not been sufficiently verified. So we wanted to ask if they are really secure to be deployed at the production level. So first, uh, to simply check out uh, the academic area, we uh, investigated how many papers are related to SDN security have been published at, in recent years. And as you can see in this graph, uh, the number of those papers has uh, increased every year since 2013. And also, in this black at USA, the briefings and the Asanar sessions about uh, the SDN security have been published as well. So we can find out that SDN security has become a real and serious problem, so we need to further analyze it. So here we have a typical SDN architecture, and it can be um, broken down into three layers, control plane, control channel, and data plane. 
And um, and also each one can be an attack vector as well. So let's check out which vulnerability exists in each layer. So the first one is the control plane, and actually this is the SDN controller. And in SDN, SDN controller can be considered as a brain of network because it knows everything about network and has a full control over it. So um, it is single point of failure and therefore any type of DOS attack against the SN controller will immediately make the entire network unavailable. So one possible uh, DOS attack is known as a packet flooding attack where an, att an attacker can generate uh, a lot of random traffic leading to sending buzzed SN uh, packet message to the SN controller so that the controller um, can be unavailable. And in the, in the case of the ch control channel, um, an attacker can guess the network topology information through the uh, ongoing SDN messages if there is no encryption. But actually, OpenFlow supports um, TLS and SSL encryption, but that is not mandatory and in practice that's rarely used due to uh, its performance impacts. And lastly, if an SDN controller or SDN application is compromised, they can push a lot of flow rule traffic to the OpenFlow switches, causing flow rule flooding attack, um, which is just the resources on the switch, uh, and so that the performance degradation on the switch can happen. In addition to those other cases that I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, there have been many other attack cases in each layer, as you shown in this SDN vulnerability genome project. So we believe the, uh, the network operators who are seeking adoption SDN um, would want to know if various SDN components are vulnerable to those attack cases or not. So one possible question is how many SDN vulnerability existing now? And also, if we have the known attack, sec uh, known attack security test scenarios, how to replay each one? Because uh, manually testing uh, each attack in different SDN components is definitely not a, not a simple task. And also, passing all these all the no security test cases does not necessarily mean that an SDN component is secure as they are make this unknown attacks. So in order to resolve those questions, from now on I'd like to introduce a security assessment framework for SDN called Delta. And here we have four design goals that Delta aims to accomplish. First, uh, it should be highly automated to minimize the human efforts because as I briefly mentioned, um, it can be very time consuming task uh, to manually set up each SDN component and run the security test and uh, verify the test result. And also, Delta should be able to find new vulnerabilities uh, as well. So in our framework, we specifically aim to first test SDN control flows uh, such as OpenFlow in um, OpenFlow based SDN. And third, Delta should, should support um, various SDN components. For instance, currently the Delta supports four open source SDN controllers, including Onus and OpenLI. And in the case of the switch devices, any OpenFlow enabled switches can be tested. And lastly, uh, when reproducing known other cases, Delta should cover as many attack scenarios as possible. For that, uh, we don't need any other testing tools. So uh, let's take a look at how Delta achieved uh, achieve each design goal. So this is how Delta looks like. Um, Delta consists of one agent manager and three different types of agents, application, channel, and host agent. And the, the agent manager is communicate with all the agent um, in the network using a dedicated Delta control channel, showing is uh, let that line in this slide. So let's have a look at the each component in detail. Um, the first one is the agent manager and um, it, it is basically control tower that manages and controls all the agent in the network. So the users would access the agent manager to configure and perform the various secret test cases uh, against the target SDN. So and whenever the test case is done, the agent manager collects each test reader uh, from each agent and then uh, makes a decision whether the test case is a success or not. And the application agent is an SDN application running inside a target controller. Uh, and it includes various known attack scenarios that could be performed by an SDN application. So we need to de develop different SDN applica uh, ap application agents against each controller because each controller provides their own network functions and open APIs. And it has uh, the fudging modules 
uh, for finding new vulner vulnerabilities. So it can intercept, forge, and change the SDN control messages in the in the controller. Uh, the forging technique used in Delta will be uh, explained in a later slide. And the channel agent uh, is located between the controller and the switch. And similar to the application agent, it also comes with the forging modules that can sniff and modif modify the ongoing SDN control messages in the uh, between the controller and the channel uh, on the switch. And uh, as a proxy, the channel agent can impose a delay on each SNA control message by um, capturing and releasing it. And uh, in order to reduce the test running, test running time, it can simulate a simple SDN controller against the target switch under the test and vice versa. And lastly, host agent ac actually is a normal host participating in the target SDN. So it is capable of generating network traffic to any accessible targets. For instance, um, the host agent sends a large volume of network traffic to the open flow switch, um, causing a packet flooding attack that I mentioned before. And it can be used to verify the connectivity to the other host or whether there is a performance degradation on the switch uh, from the traffic latency. So this is how Delta basically works. Um, as I mentioned briefly, uh, Delta provides two operation modes, uh, reproducing non attack cases and finding new vulnerabilities. So the network operator can choose either one of the modes. And uh, when in the case of the reproducing mode, the, the operator um, has to select the test cases as well. Then the agent manager instructs each agent to take different actions according to the selected uh, test scenarios. And then when uh, finding new vulnerabilities, uh, the fudging modules in the, each agent uh, randomize the SDN control flows from their location. After the test case is done, um, the agent manager collects the test region from each agent and analyzes it. Finally, uh, the agent manager tells the network operator uh, if the network has passed the test cases or not. So from this brief workflow, uh, we, can, we can see that Delta is a highly automated framework, which is our first design goal. And um, in order to find new security holes in SDN, Delta randomizes the flow, uh, SDN control flows uh, by adopting the black box fudging technique. And to more efficiently and systematically randomize it, it uh, we, we first classified the control flows into three different types based on each operations. So the first one is the symmetry control flow, uh, which is the request and response message pair. So uh, if the controller or the switch uh, sends a response message, uh, request message to the other one, the, rece the receiver has to send a response message. For instance, there are echo request and re response message pair, which is to check the, if the controller or the switch uh, is alive. And the second one is the asymmetric control flow, which is the direct unidirectional message, uh, such as packet in or flow mode that I mentioned several times. So in this case, the receiver does not have to send a response message. And lastly, we have the intra-controller control flows, which is actually open flow related API call chains between SDN applications and core services provided by the controller. So leveraging those three types of SDN control flows, uh, we derived an operational state diagram of a typical SDN controller, as shown in this picture. So in this diagram, the state labeled R stands for the ready state to receive or send the SDN control messages. And the other states are labeled in accordance with each control message type. So based on this state diagram, uh, the, the fudging modules in each agent take two steps uh, to find new vulnerabilities. So first, each agent identifies the current state of the target controller and then manipulate the flow sequences or the input values of the um, SDN control flows. So the first step is identifying the current state of the target controller. And here we have the very simple example showing how it works. So first we assume that the current state is in the ready state. And when the controller received the packet message from the switch, the channel agent in the middle notifies it to the agent manager. So the current state is moved into a state A2. And once the controller uh, hands it over to the application agent, uh, the state transition to a3 happens through the application agent. And lastly, uh, when after the controller sends a flow mode message to the switch, um, uh, the, the current, state, current state has become the state A4 by the channel agent. So the point here is that in Delta, um, the channel agent collaborates with the application agent 
to identify the current controller state. And next, we uh, let's have a look at how, del how delta randomizes the flow sequences and the input values. So one example less than operation that involves the symmetric flow sequences would be a, in a, would be a hand shake process between the controller and the switch. So according to the OpenFlow specifications, this operation should experience total seven state transition from state R to state S7, as shown in this figure. Um, in, and in the case of the control message types, uh, the handshake process takes from hello message to the set configuration message sequentially. But what if we could uh, manipulate the order of those events? So in this example, we can intentionally send uh, get config response message instead of feature response message uh, to the controller um, to see if, what if uh, anything goes wrong. And ultimately, we should try other combinations of those events um, to discover new vulnerabilities. So um, in Delta, uh, the to automatically carry out such tests in Delta, uh, the channel agent take part. And to first test the asymmetric flow sequences, Delta uh, can randomize the unidirectional messages delivered to the SDN applications. So for, for instance, when a controller captures a packet message from the switch, um, the controller propagates the message to the uh, SDN applications that are interested in such type of message in a specific order. Uh, for instance, the order of reception is uh, from application A to the application D, but we can manipulate the order inversely so that uh, the, now the application D can receive the packet message first. So in Delta, the application agent take part of uh, uh, such randomizing asymmetric flow sequences. And the randomizing the input values of the uh, SDN control message is pretty simple. So first, the, the fudging modules in the channel agent uh, can manipulate the contents of the ongoing SDN control messages between the controller and the switch. For instance, when the when controller sends flow mode message to the switch in order to install new flow rule, uh, the channel agent can modify the command fields to, of the flow mode message to the undefined value. And then the channel agent should check the response message from the switch as well. And also, the application agent uh, can randomize the contents of the ongoing SDN control messages among paths with a multiple number of SDN applications in the target controller so that uh, the other applications could be in a chaotic state. So from those, those randomizations, uh, we have found nine new other cases that, that will be uh, demonstrated in later slides. So Delta uh, can, can achieve the second design goal, that is finding new attacks. And implementation. Um, Delta is mostly implemented in Java and Python language and about the lines of codes of each component in Delta. As you can see here, the agent manager take the most part um, and the channel agent is second one and lastly the host, host agent is quite simple. And in the case of the application agent, um, as I mentioned be before, it, can, it should be differently implemented against each controller. So except for the Ryu agent that is Python based, uh, each, each application agent uh, has about 800 lines of codes on average. And currently Delta supports four open source SDN controllers, Honest, Open Daylight, Floodlight, and New Controller. And as you can see in the top table, uh, the late, latest version of each controller can be tested. And Delta support two OpenFlow versions, OpenFlow 1.0 and 1.3. So any OpenFlow enabled switches that are fluent in these versions are, can, can be tested. And as you can see in the top bottom table, uh, we have tested PK8, Arista, HP hardware switches, and OpenV switch. So um, we can say that Delta is interoperable with diverse SDN components, uh, which is the third design goal. And uh, for the user's convenience, uh, Delta provides the web-based user interface, and it consists of three main parts, live test queue and configuration log pane, and the test case inventory. Um, in the live test queue, uh, each test case is shown with different colors according to each status and result. So first, when the, each, when the test case is, comes into the test queue, uh, it's shown with white color, which means that its status queued and result is unknown. 
and the test case is shown with yellow color during the running status. And after the test case is done, um, its status has become the completed, and its uh, the color is changed to uh, either green or red depending on its research. And the configuration allow pane, uh, as you can see on the left, we can dynamically set up the target SDN controller, target OpenFlow version, and IP addresses, and so on. And on the right, uh, Delta shows the lo main log information from the agent manager at runtime. And in the test case inventory, uh, it holds all the available test cases, so the user can push each test case into the live test queue. And here we have three type, three different types of the test cases. Uh, so the test set one and two are kinds of open flow conformance test cases, so that we can uh, we can test each control message type uh, against the controller or the switch according to their direction. And lastly, we have the in advanced security test set, which is related to the SDN controllers architecture weak points exploiting SDN applications. So the number of those uh, test cases that Delta currently provides is about 40. Um, so Delta achieved the last design goal that Delta should cover many of the scenarios. So until now we have looked at what Delta is and its four design goals and its implementation. And um, from now on, Chinu will will show the attack demonstrations. So we'd like to demonstrate real text that we found and share with you some interesting results. Uh, first, we have a look at the test bed briefly and we present one known attack and two new attacks. For each attack case, we describe a detailed attack scenario and show a demo video and finally we have a discussion. For the demonstration, we set up simple test topology with two switches and two hosts. And all the switches support two OpenFlow versions, OpenFlow 1.0 and 1.3. And each one is physically connected to an SDN controller. And in the case of the SDN controllers, we tested Onos Open Daylight Flow Direct controllers. And for the OpenFlow switches, we tested Pika 8, which is one of the hardware switches, and OpenV switch, which is running on the virtual machine. And the edge to major and each agent of Delta are running on each Ubuntu server machine. So the first known attack is the packet data forge attack, but before we demonstrate it, uh, we would like to want to know about an event subscription in STN controller. In general, STN controllers have the event subscription list for each STN message type. So if, a, if an STN application wants to receive the message, the application can register in the subscription list, which is managed in the internal database. And the internal and the applications in the in subscription list have their own priority. So the higher the priority, the faster the reception of a message. And in this example, the load balance app is ranked as a top priority, so it can receive the packeting message from the controller first. And after processing the message, the load balance app can hand, the, hand it over to the next application, as you can see here. But what if we can manipulate this subscription list? So here we have an attack strategy that smashes the subscription list. <clears throat> Assuming that a malicious application is installed on an STN controller, the application can conduct an attack as follows. First, it accesses the internal database and modifies the subscription list so that the malicious application can have a top priority of receiving the messages. So this malicious application can receive the packet messages from the controller first. And now it modifies the data in packet message to map on the values, and the manipulated packet message is delivered to the next application. So when the next one refers to the wrong value, it can result in error in the internal of the application. So now let's see how Delta can reproduce this attack in a systematic way. First, the agent to manager instructs the app agent to manipulate the subscription list. Then, the app agent running on the STN controller modifies the subscription list so that the app agent can have a top priority of the receiving the packet messages. After this, the agent major orders the host agent to generate narrow package, which intentionally makes the OpenFlow switch send a packet message to the controller. So the app agent receives the packet message as it is the first one in the subscription list. 
Now, the app agent removes the payload of the packet message, so which means that the payload becomes a null value. And the modified packet message is delivered to the next application, which is topology manager in this example. So when the topology manager tries to access the empty payload, it can trigger a null point exception error in the controller, and this violation makes the uh, controller disconnect the switch or links, and the, which is one of our criteria that evaluates whether an attack is successful or not. So now let's take a look at the demo video. In this video, on the left, we have Delta Web UI, and on the top right, we have Floodlight Controller, and the bottom right, and the Wireshark is learning, which shows OpenPro package between the controller and switches. And also, as you can see on the left, we can configure various SDN related parameters, such as target SDN controller and OpenFlow version. So now, in the test case inventory, we can pick the prepared attack cases as well. And this attack case is targeting flow drive version 1.1. And when we run the attack case, the agent manager automatically executes the target SDN controller and each agent of Delta. And in the log pane, we can see the overall situation in the agent manager and other agents. And please report to the minimap located on the top left to understand the overall workflow of the attack. And we can see that there are two connected switches on the Floodlight controller. And now the app agent attacks the internal database of the Floodlight to manipulate the subscription list. So here, before the attack, the app agent was the last one in the subscription list. But after the attack, the app agent became the first one to receive the packet messages. So here, the payload of the packet message is removed by the app agent, so the next application refers the empty payload. And as you can see on the floodlight controller, the switch A is disconnected because of the null point exception error. And we can also backtrack the reason of the disconnection by looking at the log messages. And here, we can figure out that the, there was a null point exception error in the floodlight controller. And finally, since the host agent fails to communicate with the other host, the agent major decides that this attack is feasible to flood like controller. So which means that the attack is successful. So going back to the Delta dashboard, the attack case is marked as a fail. So then why is it possible to flood like? The reason is that SDN applications are granted very powerful authority so, which means that the current SDN applications are able to call core services and APIs that provide from the SDN controller without any constraint. So, to defend this attack, we suggest that SDN controller should adopt a policy based access control mechanism like the Android permission system. So, the security mode on us is a good example of the permission system for the SDN controller. And the second attack case targets open daylight, which is typically called ODL. And in the case of the ODL, it manages two types of databases. The first one is configuration database, and it can be used for the installation of proactive flow rules that need to be configured before the control channel is established. And the installed rules on the configuration DB are permanently preserved, even if the controller or the channel is closed. On the other hand, the installed controllers on the operator DB are automatically removed after the control channel is shut down. The important point here is that ODL always refers to the configuration DB when handshake with the switch. So based on this property, we can design an attack strategy as follows. First, a malicious application injects a map on the floral to the configuration DB, and the floral has some wrong values that can cause an error. And now, an attacker uses an MI10 proxy to cut the control channel temporarily. So, the one of OpenPro switch will try to reconnect to the controller by sending a handshake message. 
and the controller will access to the configuration DB to get the predefined floaters. But here, the controller read the mailbound floater which is installed in the previous step, so this can cause an error in the internal of the controller. So now, again, uh, let's see how this can find out this attack. First, the aid to manager orders the app agent to push the mailbound floater to the configuration DB. And the app agent makes the floater including a group action field which is not supported field in OpenFlow 1.0. Here we assume that the switches are using OpenFlow 1.0 version. After that, the agent manager commands that the channel agent interrupts the control channel in a few seconds. So in this example, the switch A retries to connect to the controller by sending hello messages. But the SDN controller gets a null point session when reading the abnormal value in the configuration DB. So the hand check is continuously failed because the abnormal value is constantly remained in the configuration DB. So we have an another demonstration again. And in this demonstration, we have the configuration database on the bottom line. And this attack is effective to open the oxygen version and will run the attack on VM environment. And the open the GUI will appear at the bottom left. So at the start of the learning ODL, is, is the configuration DB is initialized. And before the attack, you can see that there are two connected switches on open day line. And now the app agent installs the map on the floater to the configuration DB, and the floater has a null value in the group action field. So here the channel agent breaks the open procession for a little moment by sending a TCP reset packet. So after the attack, you can see that the switch A disappeared from the open day live web UI. And as shown in the Wireshark, there are a bunch of handshake packets because the handshake is continuously failed. So now, what is the problem of ODL? The first reason is that uh, ODL is not able to handle such an exception when it handshake with your switch. So which means that even though ODL failed many times, it just repeated the same task without resolving the problem. And another problem is that there is an absence of map on floral management, so it means that owners doesn't bury that input floral. So to defend this attack, uh, we think that ODL should detect the infinite failures of the handshake process and it need to locate and resolve the root problem, not just repeating many task. And also, ODL should filter on input floral when it comp when it receives the incomparable field from the application. For example, in the previous attack, the group action field is a feature of OpenPro 1.3, even though the switches are using OpenPro 1.0. So lastly, we have an attack case against owners. In SDN, the installed flow rule should be same between the controller's flow table and switch's flow table. And this means that there should be suitable synchronization technique in order to accurately synchronize flow rules. So in the case of the owners, they use flow state, open flow flow statistics message. Let me give you an example. Here, if an owner's application installs a floor to the controller's flow table, the controller reads the floor and builds an open flow packet. Here, which is flow mode packet, and sends it to the switch. So it results in that a floor is installed on the switch's flow table. And now the controller periodically collects the floors from the switch and the Flow statistics messages have information about the installed flow rules on the switch. And this period of time is default 5 seconds in ONOS. And then the controller compares the collected rules with the original one on the controller's flow table. And they check whether they are exactly matched or not. So with this method, the consistency between the switch and controller can be periodically investigated. 
But the interesting point here is that if Ono thinks that the consistency is broken, Ono removes and reinstalls every installed Pro rules of the switch. So we can break the consistency by installing a malformed Pro rule with an embedded value. So here, the malicious application again installs an embedded Pro rule to the controller's flow table, and the Pro rule has a big integer value that can that can be overflowed. Now the controller builds the floor rule and sends it to the switch, but here the injected integer value is overflowed, so it is converted into a different one. And now whenever the controller coll collects a flow statistics from the switch, it compares the rules with the original one again, but obviously, since they are totally different, owners decide to remove all previously placed rules. So finally, Again, we, let's look at the how data can find out this attack. So we, are, we assume that the host agent communicates with the other host, so there are related flow rules on the switches. And now the agent major instructs the app agent to make the flow, malformed flow rule. Then the app agent randomly injects an output port number to the controller's flow table. So when the controller builds the open flow packet, the injected output port number is overflowed, so it is changed into the unintended value. But from the controller's view, the installed flow rule on the switch is not matched to the original one on the controller's flow table. So it clears all installed flow rules and tries to reinstall them. But still, they are not same each other due to the overflowed value, so this is infinitely repeated every five seconds. So let's take a look at the video clip finally. So this attack is effective to Ono's latest version, and Ono's will appear at the bottom left. And at the start of the Ono's, it installed the default floor, default floor rules into the switches as you can see on the right. And this terminal is connected to the switch Pika 8, which is real hardware switch. And here, the left table is in the controller's database, and right one is in the switch's table. Before the attack, they are exactly the same. But here, after the attack, you can see that the floor on the controller has the big up port number, and it is not the same with the actually installed one on the switch A. So Ono thinks that there was an inconsistency problem when he installed the floor rule from the storage. So it decided to remove all installed floor rules. So as you can see on the Wireshark, there are a bunch of floor mode and floor removed messages, which means that the synchronization continuously failed. So again, what, why is it possible to Ono's? The first one is that Onos doesn't conduct a range check against each field carefully. And every five seconds, Onos mainly synchronizes flow rules, um, even though there is a malformed flow rule in the storage. So how do we defend this attack? Obviously, Onos should check the range of the critical fields in a sort of manner when building a flow rule. And uh, when, there is, when there is a synchronization failure, owners need to analyze root problem of the malfunction, not just repeating mainly synchronization. So actually, we would discover nine new attacks uh, as shown in this table by using Delta. But we demonstrate two of them due to the time constraint, and that is malformed flow regeneration and infinite flow synchronization. So in conclusion, we all know that SCN is known as a next generation networking because it has significant benefits than traditional one. But still, there are a lot of vulnerabilities, so we need to improve the secret of SDN. So with the help of the Delta, we can systemically conduct pen testing against the entire SDN architecture. And the forging techniques of Delta allow us to find new vulnerabilities and our tool is now available as an open source project, so please visit our GitHub and join us. 
Thank you very much for your listening and any questions.